You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to the Linda Fostek Show. Disasters are all around us. Turn on the news and Mother Nature is on a rampage. Personal disasters put our lives on hold or derail us completely. Join Linda as she invites you to become part of the solution. It's time to get off the worry-go-round with your host, Linda Fostek. Welcome, everyone. I'm your host, Linda Fostek, and this is the Linda Fostek Show. Get off the worry-go-round. We are live tonight on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. If you would like to join in the conversation tonight, please call in at 866-451-1451. Don't let the next disaster catch you by surprise. Get your free disaster planning roadmap and disaster checklist today at thecrisisplanner.com. And yes, we are still in the middle of the pandemic. And yes, we still have fires in the West, although thankfully the snow has kind of dampened some of the fires in Colorado. And they've had some rain in the Northwest, which has helped in Washington and Oregon and Northern California. And the winds have died down slightly in Southern California, allowing the firefighters to finally get a handle on some of these fires, thank goodness. This has been definitely a record-breaking fire season for the West, and certainly the heat has been brutal through most of the summer and through the fall. So we are grateful for some cooling off now, and uh, obviously we've had some nice cool temperatures and some snowfall that has definitely, and rain that has helped a lot. As far as our hurricane season is concerned, I'm going to do a little something for you in terms of something I learned when I was in college. Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Zeta, Eta, Theta, Iota, Kappa, Lambda, Mu, Nu, Xi, Omicron, Phi, Rho, Sigma, Tau, Ustalon, Phi, Chi, Psi, Omega, and that is the Greek alphabet. And we have Ada, which came ashore in Nicaragua as a cat for hurricane kind of sprung up very suddenly, although they were kind of watching the, the spot last last week. Um, and uh, But this one really popped up really fast. Of course, Zeta raced across, um, hit actually in Louisiana last Tuesday, and then when, th- Wednesday, Thursday, kind of got into Georgia. And of course, this weekend, the Northeast actually saw the rain and wind effects from uh, Zeta. I have seen a number of tree limbs down up here, but we certainly did not have it nearly as bad. And poor Louisiana, I think the entire coastline of Louisiana has been struck by a hurricane during this hurricane season. Um, right now, Ada, like I said, just hit Nicaragua as a cat four, uh, bringing a storm surge of approximately 23 feet, a 23 foot storm surge accompanied by almost three feet of rain. Now, um, Ada is expected to be a tropical depression after it makes the U-turn through Central America and comes back out into the Gulf of Mexico and makes a beeline for Cuba and possibly a Southern Florida hit later on this week. Now, thank goodness they're not expect. they don't really think it's going to uh, increase in strength. It'll be a tropical depression, maybe a tropical storm. But with this hurricane season, I don't think any of us 
can let our guard down until the season is truly over. Now, my recitation of the Greek alphabet earlier is just to remind you there's a lot more letters left that if we should need them, we have a lot more letters to go. Um, Actually, if there is to be a next name storm, it would be theta, which a theta is a circle with a line through it. So that is a theta. So um, very interesting. This has been one of the busiest storm seasons on record. I think actually with the advent of Ada's naming, we have officially broken the record for the most named storms in a single season. Um, so it's not over until the end of November. And here we sit on November 3rd. Oh, my goodness. So we still have a ways to go, a few more weeks of holding our breath and being prepared. And like I said, don't let your guard down. Um, storm season is not over. And of course, while the southern states have been battling all these hurricanes, uh, the northern states are getting ready for their winter um, blizzard and snowstorm season. Uh, we have already experienced some major snowfall in the northern part of New York State. The lake effect is in, a, uh, shall we say, lake effect snow is in full at, that, at the moment. We have been getting lots and lots of snow along the Great Lakes in the typical areas of Lake Effect snow. There's been some areas in New York State, upstate, that have already gotten a foot of snow. So for those of your snow bunnies out there that love the snow, that may be something that is very exciting to you. But for most of us, snow driving is not something that we are looking forward to. But as November creeps along, it's time for us to really start thinking about being ready for winter, and winter driving and starting to think ahead and plan ahead for the potential of being stuck in snow in driving in snow and knowing how traffic backs up. So start putting your things together, your snow brushes and scrapers and sand and shovels and gloves and your emergency kit in your car as we speak. So that's is some of the major news. Obviously, COVID-19 is still very much making news as um, there has been an uptick in actual case cases being diagnosed. And in fact, there were two major fines issued this weekend um, on Long Island for one for a wedding where there were about 96 attendees and a third of which actually have now been positively diagnosed with COVID-19. So that's being called a super spreader event. And there was a $12,000 fine levied on the establishment that had the, that hosted the wedding. And then there was a house party attended primarily by teenagers and um, young adults at, that numbered about 300 resulting in the homeowner fine as well. Uh, we are still in a situation where we need to be aware that COVID-19 is still very much around and we need to be careful. We are going to be taking our first break. Once again, I'm your host, Linda Postek, and this is the Linda Postek Show. Get off the worry ground. We are live tonight on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio, and we will see you on the other side of the break. Have you ever felt like no one is listening or you're not getting the honest attention you deserve? Do you even know the kind of attention you want or need? You are not alone. Alice Aspen March is here to help. Thanks to Alice, through her epiphany and research over the word attention, there are solutions to the attention dilemma. Worldwide audiences have been enthralled and engaged for over 40 years with her visionary and pioneering observations. The kind of attention we get and give is vital to improving our lives and society. Alice and her weekly guests review game-changing insights for transforming and improving our understanding of attention, providing techniques for creating healthier and 
and empowering behavior. Get a new perspective on a mainstream word. Tune into Why Our Attention Matters for fresh and thought-provoking conversations every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on BoldBraveMedia.com and the TuneIn Radio app. Welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, Linda Fostek, and this is the Linda Fostek Show. Get off the worry around. We are live tonight on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And before the break, we were just getting into a little conversation on COVID. And, and really, the, we still need to be responsible. And these large gatherings, I mean, we are in New York State, we are limited to gatherings of 50 people. Um, there was a another family gathering of 30 people that did result in a number of pe- people becoming uh, COVID positive after that event. But because it was under the threshold, there was no fine levied. So if you can have a family gathering and it is within the threshold set by New York State, you can be okay. Now, they are making some specific recommendations that if you are having a family gathering that is numbering 50 people or less, you know, or less, but a larger family gathering. And then we certainly are all getting ready for those Thanksgiving gather- gatherings. And I know a lot of people are having conversations about whether they can have their families over or how much of their family they can have over or how, how much of their extended family they can have over. I mean, there's a lot of things that you can do to certainly keep everybody safe. Ideally, you want to spend as much time outside as possible indoor air because the virus is definitely in the air and it is spread in the air. So unless you have really incredible air filtration and circulation in your house, you don't want everybody crammed together in a closed space. So if it's possible to set your dinner up outside in a tent maybe that has some heating element involved that allows a lot of fresh air to circulate. I mean, granted, everybody's going to be bundled up because late November is going to be cold, but you want to try to limit the amount of time that everybody is together. Um, You know, they're saying two-hour limit, which is really sad because Thanksgiving is usually a lot longer than two hours. Um, The other thing they're saying is try to limit the amount of singing and loud talking, because when you talk loudly, you tend to spray each other with droplets, which tend to also be very potent in in spreading the virus. And they're also encouraging people to wear masks unless they are actually eating and drinking. So when you sit down to eat, that's fine not to wear a mask. But when you're just socializing and having conversations or cooking in the kitchen or whatever, you should still wear your masks. Um, We really don't want to get into a situation where the state mandates us to be shut down again. I don't think anybody could handle that again. I think it was painful enough the first time. Uh, We did it because we did it for a better public good. But to do it again, I, I don't, I think psychologically there would be a huge rebellion and people would really have total meltdowns about having to be shut down again. Uh, One of the interesting things I read today is that the CDC has um, indicated that even if you have active COVID and are actively being quarantined, you have the right to go and vote which I found was very, very interesting because it was a dilemma. I mean, how, you know, I mean, technically, I I just came back from uh, a trip. I, I'm in quarantine. I'm trying to stay home as much as possible. I had requested an absentee ballot, which never came. So I did go and vote today, you know, wearing my mask and standing outside on the line, which that's primarily where we are. Um, and... I did go and vote today, and I was like, I'm wondering if I'm breaking the law or could get in trouble. But according to the CDC, uh, my right to vote supersedes the right of the state to quarantine me, which was kind of interesting. Uh, I found that to be a little bit of an interesting tidbit. Tidbit. Um, So 
Um, last week, I actually did travel out of the country, um, and I was in Mexico for three days, and I found it very interesting. You know, I think one of the things I've lamented about through this whole COVID thing has been how we call it in the United States social distancing, which to me says anti-social distancing, meaning we don't like anybody. In Mexico, they call it sana distancing. Sana distance means healthy distance, which has a much more positive connotation. If you're doing something for health, you're doing it for a good reason. Whereas you're doing something as antisocial, that's kind of not such a good reason. So I, I think that they got it right. We kind of got it wrong. I've been calling it healthy distancing from the beginning because I just was put off by the social distancing term. So I will continue to call it healthy distancing because that is my preferred term. Now, uh, I was so impressed in Mexico. Everybody is wearing masks. A, a large number of people were wearing masks and face shields. Um, and they were observing the social distancing rules. Um, I was grateful that I was not staying in a ho- any hotels or, you know, I was not in any public places except for the airports. But the airports were very well regulated. On the airplanes, I had like the whole road to myself. There was like nobody else on the plane, it felt like. Um, so I felt very, very safe. I did wear my mask and face shield on the plane as well as I got myself this really cool little device, which um, one of the uh, doctors that I had on the show about a month and a half ago talked about the, the fact that the virus is in the air. So there's three things that you can do to purify the air. You can use HEPA filtration. You can use uh, UVC light, which is not harmful to you, but it is very harmful to viruses and bacteria. And uh, you also can use ionization. Well, ionization has been used for years for people who suffer from allergies. I mean, they use ionization to kill bacteria, viruses, and molds and, and allergens in the air. So I actually found this little uh, device called an air tamer, which is a personal ionization unit that you wear uh, around your neck. It's, uh, it's on a string. You wear it around your neck. And it purifies the air like it creates like this three foot bubble around you of pure of air that is free of bacteria, viruses, mold and other allergens. So I did wear that in the airport and on the airplane while I was traveling and felt very, very comfortable, very secure, not fearful. Um, Like I said, there really were not that many people traveling and it made the trip very, very comfortable and enjoyable and it was wonderful to get away it, and it was I felt so normal to be away from New York and of course coming back to New York it was like welcome back to New York State Prison and uh, I have been dutifully obeying my 14 day quarantine with the exception of going out to vote today which I felt that was more important than staying in my house and uh, when I'm not sick, I have no symptoms. There is nothing going on. So I'm feeling very happy and healthy and grateful for all the wonderful things that um, are going are happening for me. So this has been a true, true adventure uh, for all of us. And we all need to still maintain the, the habits that we're creating. Wear a mask if you're going to be in public. If you're going to be with people in closed proximity, make sure you have a mask on. If you're going inside of stores shopping, wear your mask. It's just a a courtesy to the people around you and for yourself. You're not just protecting yourself. You're protecting others. Um, And, you know, make sure you're doing the hand washing. You're 20 seconds. Happy birthday song twice while you're lathering up and... That'll keep your hands clean, use your hand sanitizer, observe that healthy distancing, limit your exposure to large crowds, and and enjoy the beautiful days that we're having. I mean, fall is just such an amazing time of year 
here on Long Island and elsewhere in the country, you know, where it's been really, really hot and now it's starting to get cool at night. You can go outside and take a walk. You can go out and watch the sunset and see the birds and everything else. And of course, now that we just had the time change, a lot of people have been complaining that, oh, we got an extra hour of 2020. But don't forget, when the pandemic was at its peak back in March and April, we actually sprang forward. So we lost an hour of the worst of the pandemic. We gave it back when the pandemic is a little bit less um, intense around us. So um, while the numbers are climbing in terms of the number of positive cases, on the positive side, the um, healthcare institutions, the hospitals, the um, intensive care units and everything are not being overwhelmed with COVID patients. Uh, the death rate per 100,000 is declining. Uh, they have much better therapeutics and better ways of managing the disease. If you do get sick, you have a 99 point, you know, you have 90, uh, better than 99% chance of surviving this. And I know uh, a lot of people that have gotten COVID and recovered. I do know a couple of people that did not make it through back in the early days of this this pandemic, um, both of which the two people that I knew that passed early on were both very, very sick at the time that they got it. And it was just they they just didn't have anything left to fight it with. So, you know, obviously, when you have, mul you know, multiple um, pre-existing conditions, serious pre-existing conditions, you are far more vulnerable to this disease and you need to really pay attention. We are actually going to be taking our next break. Once again, I'm your host, Linda Fostek, and this is the Linda Fostek Show. Get off the worry go round, and we are live tonight on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio, and we will see you on the other side of the break. Tune into It's All About You with host Dr. Martha Latz, a lively weekly broadcast on BBM Global Network, one of the most empowering shows for time-starved, overscheduled multitaskers. The professional expertise of Dr. Latz is directly available live every Thursday at 1 p.m. to answer and address concerns about relationships, life transitions of career, meeting, dating, and committed relationships. It's All About You with Dr. Latz will expand your understanding of career current concerns across your relationships by broadening and expanding possible solutions in developing skills for mutually desired outcomes. Dr. Martha's expertise is as a licensed marriage and family therapist, life, transition coach, and all things to do with communication at work, home, and with friends. Check out her website at auniquetherapycenter.com. Global Glory, that's the work of Dr. Marina McLean, COO of Global Glory, whose calling is to serve God. A first-generation British-born Londoner of Jamaican descent, Dr. McLean inherited the hunger for the word from her father, who was a Bible teacher. Growing up, her home was filled with missionaries from the Caribbean islands and America, and she travels the world preaching the gospel. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree in theology and an honorary doctorate of divinity and Christian counseling from Friends. International Christian University. Dr. McLean is also a songwriter and recording artist, and her songs are written during summits and conferences in the presence of God. She's recorded three worship albums to date and is in ministry for 28 years alongside her husband, Dr. Rennie McLean, who shares her passion. Visit www.globalglory.org or on Facebook at Global Glory. Call 866 244 5679 and feel the glory. Welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, Linda Fostek, and this is the Linda Fostek Show. Get off the worry go round, and we are live tonight on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And before the break, we were kind of talking about 
um, COVID and some of the things that have been going on and the things we can do to continue to keep ourselves safe. And, you know, the last thing I want to mention is it's so important that you take care of yourself. You need to have your immune system at working at its optimum level. And to do that, especially now that it's getting darker earlier, we have less chance of being out in the sun uh, to get that essential vitamin D3. Take some additional D3 supplementation, get some zinc supplementation, vitamin C supplementation, your turmeric supplementation, all of which will help get your immune system working at full capacity. Get a full night's sleep every night so that you don't get run down. And, you know, if you do get sick, you'll recover faster. But most likely, it's going to prevent you from getting sick as long as you keep your immune system in tip-top shape. Um, you know, and if you have a pre-existing condition, all the more reason to talk to your doctor about how to get your immune system working at its optimum levels um, and the kind of supplementation that you should be taking. Um, I know um, the doctor I had on a month and a half ago was talking about the importance of taking additional D3 keeping your to keep your immune system working at its optimal level um, and that is your best defense against covid against the flu you know for those of you who do get flu shots please go get them i understand they're running out of flu shots in a lot of the pharmacies um, i was just uh, i just heard a a report that they've had to reorder you know flu vaccine because they ran out in some pharmacies so uh, make an appointment, get your flu vaccine if that's something that you do every year. And, you know, I do anticipate that we're going to have a COVID vaccine available for the most vulnerable population very quickly. And after the first of the year, you know, I'm looking for it to be rolled out for the rest of the people who want to get the COVID vaccine. So I do believe we've turned the corner on COVID, even though some of the numbers may sound a little scary. They're only telling you the the numbers of the diagnosed, the newly diagnosed cases. They're not giving you survival rates, recovery rates, hospitalization and death rates. They're not telling you those numbers anymore. Uh, we are seeing, you know, a decline in the number of deaths. And, you know, there has been an increase in cases in some of the states that hadn't been previously infected. Obviously, New York and New Jersey and Connecticut and, you know, the states in the Northeast that were very heavily affected back in March. You know, we're trying to keep ourselves at that low level that we have achieved. And that's one of the reasons why our governor here in New York has decided that everybody has to quarantine when they've been anywhere outside of New York State, which is like, you know, feels like New York State prison to me, but that's, you know, part of what we have to do if you live in New York. It's the price you pay um, if you want to play. <laughs> so, um, and so that's really the COVID story for tonight. Now, one of the things I did want to mention is that, you know, we, it is election day. And you know, I hope everybody who could vote did vote today, no matter who your candidate is. This is a sacred right and duty of an adult citizen of the United States of America. It is your responsibility to cast your vote. Your vote does matter. And I am proud to say that I have voted in every election since 1968, which was the first time I was eligible to vote. Oh, I guess it, it was probably not 68. It was 72 that I voted. Um, that was the first time I was eligible to vote. 68, I would have been too young. Uh, but uh, they actually had changed the voting age from 21 to 18, and I was, I was allowed to vote in that first election. Um, and it made me feel like I was finally participating in the process of, of government. Now, 
you can say, well, my vote doesn't count. How important is one vote? There have been elections that have been decided by one vote or a handful of votes. So every vote is important. And it doesn't matter who your candidate is. It is your responsibility to get out there and vote. And I have to say, I've been voting in East Northport for the last 40 years in the same school at the same location. And this is the first time I have ever had to wait on a line that extended all the way from the school out to the road. Um, It really made me so proud to be an American, to see all of the people lined up with their parkers on and their hoodies up and their gloves on in the cold, in the wind, patiently waiting their turn to cast their ballot. Um, it, It was really amazing because typically I would go into my polling place and there'd be one or two people in front of me, but not today. This election is probably the most pivotal election in my lifetime, the most important election in my lifetime, and and in yours. So I, I hope and pray that everybody out there did take the, the time today, and even with the line all the way out to the road, from my house, standing on line, getting in to vote, and getting home, took a total of a half an hour. You can spend a half an hour to be part of the the system, to be part of making America what America can be. So that was just my thoughts on voting. Obviously, we don't have too much of the results yet, and we may not have results. Uh, There are a couple of states we may not have results from for three, five, seven I think there's one state that is is counting ballots up to 14 days after today. So it is something that uh, we may not know all the results right away, but know this, that everybody's watching, everybody is checking to make sure that every vote, every legitimate vote counts. We are actually going to be taking our next break. Once again, I'm your host, Linda Fostek, and this is the Linda Fostek Show. Get off the worry go round. And we are live tonight on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And we will see you on the other side of the break. Author, radio show host, and coach, John M. Hawkins, reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and to Tune in radio. MJ Domit is the owner of Expect to be Empowered, a company whose specialty is empowering people to live their best life by following their heart and accepting themselves unconditionally. After studying and making personal changes, MJ now focuses on giving others tools for self-empowerment. She provides individual and group workshops for people who are physically, emotionally, and spiritually blocked. Inspired by her work at Expect to be Empowered, MJ authored the book Waves of Blue Light, Heal the Heart and Free the Soul with a company empowerment cards she is a spirit book of the year gold medal living now book award winner 
And her book is a number one Amazon bestseller in spirituality and was a 2012 gold medal winner recognized as the Living Now Spirit Book of the Year. An inspirational speaker, MJ will show you how you can repurpose every area of your life. Your life did not just happen to you. You chose it, which means you can change it. Visit www.expecttobeempowered.com or call 866-264-8024. Welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, Linda Fostek, and this is the Linda Fostek Show. Get off the worry-go-round, and we are live tonight on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. So before the break, we were just kind of chatting about um, just how important it is for every one of us to have voted today or voted before today or sent your mail-in ballots in before today uh, to vote is a sacred right and duty. And if you don't vote, you're really giving up your right to having a voice, to having to being able to complain legitimately. Because if you don't participate in the system, you really have no right to complain. So let's... Uh, Think about the positive that is going to come out of this. I mean, just think about this. All those horrible ads on TV, we won't have to listen to those anymore. We won't have a million phone calls coming in on our cell phones and our landlines. We won't have all those emails begging us for money. (laughs) I am going to be so happy and grateful when this is all over, believe me. And I'm sure everyone is feeling kind of the same way. Well, tonight I kind of have a little bit of a different kind of a topic in that tonight's topic is really about perspective. And I'd like to invite you to be the eye of the storm. Now, being the eye of the storm, what does that mean? You know, of course, if you like me right away, you're thinking about a hurricane, right? But I'm not talking about a hurricane. You know, we've all heard of the eye of the storm where, where the winds stop and the clouds dissipate. And even the birds can be seen flying across the blue sky. And, and I've been through a couple of hurricanes where the eye has passed directly overhead. And I've seen that you know, the the raging storm and then the eye comes and everything stops and is quiet and peaceful. And, you know, and you stand in that eerie silence of the eye of the storm. You know, and certainly this year's hurricane season has been exceptionally busy, as I was talking about earlier. And it's brought with us many other storms that have not been hurricanes. You know, we've faced unprecedented challenges in 2020. And each one of those challenges has been its own storm affecting each of us in different ways. And whether it was COVID-19 or job loss or financial issues or not being able to open your business or losing a loved one or or having somebody who was sick and who was who passed away not from COVID, not being able to see your your parents who are in uh, assisted livings or nursing homes, not being able to have company over. I mean, everything has been turned upside down. You know, and it's affected each of us in different ways, certainly. And in fact, many of us has faced, have had to face the storms of 2020 alone, isolated, and afraid. But I'd like to invite you to look at these storms from a new perspective And be the eye of the storm. Be the calm center while chaos swirls all around you. Take time every day to go to a place of peace, healing, harmony, imagination, and love. Visualize 
the what ifs and possibilities that this storm has brought to us. Instead of lamenting about what was or what happened, focus on, focus your energy on what actually could be. You know, when something blows away in the storm, it always offers you a new opportunity to build something new. So what are you going to build? You know, you're only limited by your imagination. You know, when the world shut down in March, I actually shut down too. And so many of us did. You know, I was swept up in that chaos and fear and, you know, that was being blasted me from, at me from everywhere, from the television, from my emails, from everything being canceled, all that stuff. I, you know, all of that was coming down on me. And as a widow, I was alone with only my golden retriever Bristol to keep me company. And that wasn't a good place to be. Well, Bristol is a great listener. He's not a great conversationalist. And certainly that isolation and, and feeling of being totally alone was not something that was giving me much comfort in the storm that was COVID. You know, in the two months before the shutdown, I'd been on a whirlwind of a an amazing experiences as I flew around the country, uh, appearing on TV. I traveled to India as a guest speaker. I attended conferences uh, that invited me to envision what my vision of 2020 was going to be. And all of that came to a halt on March 20, on March 17th. You know, everything stopped. <laughs> you know, now what was I going to do? You know, after a particularly difficult night in April, crying my eyes out and allowing myself to just feel the loneliness and despair that so many others were also feeling as we were swept into this storm, I actually had a defining moment. It was... In that moment, I made a choice, a choice to step out of the storm and into the eye of it. It was then I made peace with my circumstances. I decided to control what I could control and let go of what I could not. I set my intention that the storm was not going to define me, nor defeat me. Oh my God, that was just so empowering. That was such an empowering moment. I can't tell you, it changed my whole perspective on what this was all about. You know, how many of you had a moment like that? during the shutdown. I'm sure many of you have thought about, what can I do to change it? We're going to get back on this subject on the other side of this next break. Once again, I'm your host, Linda Fostek, and this is the Linda Fostek Show. Get off the worry-go-round. And we are live on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio tonight, and we will see you on the other side of the break and continue this conversation. According to the American Nurses Association, there are approximately three and a half to four million nurses in the United States. So where do all these nurses work? What kind of roles do they have? What kind of education and training help to prepare them for so many different settings? What kind of impact do nurses have on patient outcomes? The World Health Organization has announced that 2020 will be the year of the nurse, honoring the 200th birth anniversary of Florence Nightingale, an international initiative called Nurse 
Nursing Now is underway to raise the profile of nursing. The National Academy of Medicine has convened a committee to create the future of nursing 2020 to 2030 that will focus on how the nursing profession can create a culture of health, reduce health disparities, and improve the health and well-being of the U.S. population. Learn more and join Joyce Batchelor on All About Nursing, Wednesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on the BBM Global Network. French Rastafarian baker Chef Hugues Mott is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations in classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Uvmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoub.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. Yeah, you know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416 529 7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well, be aware, be magical. Welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, Linda Fostek, and this is the Linda Fostek Show. Get off the worry go around, and we are live tonight on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And before the break, I was I was sharing how I had a defining moment during this COVID shutdown, and I made a choice to step out of the chaos of the storm and into the eye of it, and I decided that the storm was not going to define nor defeat me. In the calm of the eye, I had this clarity of, and vision for what I could do instead of what I could not. I changed my path for my health. I started an exercise and eating plan, and it allowed me to release 36 pounds that I've been trying to lose for a long time. And it's about releasing it. Because when you release something, you don't find it again. When you lose it, you always find it. So let, I'm, I'm releasing it to, to the universe. I changed my path for my business with time to learn so many new things, uh, how to use the tools I had not had the time to use before. Um, I got three new certifications, life coaching, emotional intelligence, neurolinguistic programming uh, to complete my business. You know, and they all complemented my business offerings. I changed my inclination to procrastination and I turned it into motivation, finishing projects on my to do list that had been lingering there for I, I, so long I can't even remember. And I changed my connection with myself. I took time to enjoy the simple pleasures of life. I was cooking, savoring every bite that I was preparing. I was meditating, journaling, and most of all, I opened myself up to receiving all the abundance that was being offered to me. In being open to receiving, I unlocked a pathway that literally has poured an un unended waterfall of creativity into me. And and I become creative and predictive and inspired and determined to have the success that I want to have. And it's brought me to a new and timely opportunity to serve others. 
and it certainly can bring you there too. If it hadn't been for the storm, I would never have seen or found myself in the eye of it. In the eye of the storm, you can see what was being torn apart by the wind and the waves. You can see the things that were strong enough to endure the onslaught, and you can see the things that were too weak to stand. It's the perfect time to let go of the things that aren't serving you at the highest level. And some of those things may be comfortable old friends, but they're things, you know, things that you may have always done a certain way that may need a new approach, an upgrade, or to be discarded. Remember, you are the eye of the storm. The storm is not stationary, and you shouldn't be stationary either. And you have to move with the eye, because to stay in the eye, you have to move with it, because otherwise it passes over you and the storm hits you on the other side, right? So you gotta, you wanna make sure you stay in the eye. And so you have to stay focused on moving forward and stay focused on being that island of calm when the world is in panic around you. And I, I was seeking new solutions, new ways of doing things and imagining how I could serve others at my highest level. And you can do that too. You can imagine things you've never imagined before. You can dare to dream, to dream big and then dream even bigger. You know, I pulled things out of my squirrel file. I have this file I call a squirrel file and it's for ideas that uh, that may be out there that uh, it's not the time to do them or whatever. Uh, I have this, it's a squirrel file, you know, you remember uh, the movie Up with the dog, you know, squirrel, squirrel, well, you know, I'm easily distracted. So I, when I have one of those ideas, I write it down and I put it in my squirrel file. And I had a project that had been in my squirrel file for four years, but the time is right for me to bring that project out to the world. And I... I initially had thought it would be a distraction, but now it fits into the new landscape of the storm, that, you know, what the storm is leaving in its path. And if I don't do it now, I mean, why would I hesitate? If the time is now, it's the right time to bring this forward. And I'm so excited about this new project. And it's opened amazing opportunities for me. And that's just what it could do for you. You know, when you're in the eye of the storm, your vision is clear. Your mission will evolve. Your life will be suspended in time for a moment, allowing you to see a new path. This new path will be visible only if you become the eye of the storm. So are you ready? to step into it? Are you ready to step out of the chaos swirling in the powerful winds that the storm, that are the storm, and step into the eye? Are you ready to truly become the eye of the storm? And I know it's scary out there. <laughs> Certainly, I, I, I have to say that at times, I even I get scared. But if you need to, take my hand and I'll pull you into the safety of the eye. Well, I don't really think you need my help. My faith in you and the power within you gives me great confidence to know that you can do it. You can become the eye of your storm. You can reimagine everything. This pause has been a great gift. And for so many people, they have, they're sitting in the middle of the storm being battered by the winds and the rain and they're not, and they're fighting it and they're holding on to things for dear life that maybe they need to let go of. And all they have to do is step into the eye and they will see 
the things that they couldn't see when you were fighting the storm. I, I, like I said, I, I have been given such a gift of clarity through this and the opportunities that have come to me through this have been numerous and they keep coming. My new project I am so excited about is another project about solutions. And it's something that I will be talking about very soon on an upcoming show because it is something that fills such an important need right now for our children who are the future of the world. And I know in my heart of hearts that this project is something that is going to really bring these children a gift to open their minds to imagination and curiosity and problem solving so that they can help us be better and help the world be a better place for everyone. So take that leap of faith. Get ready to step into the eye of your storm. And I have faith in you and the power within you gives me the confidence to know that you are ready, willing, and able to be the eye of the storm. I, I know that for me, this was transformational and thinking about it in this way can be transformational for you too. And if, if I can just give you this small gift of perspective to become that eye of your storm, you can weather any storm and, and come out the other side stronger and more powerful than you ever imagined you could be. I want to thank you all for joining me this week. Don't let a disaster blindside you. Get your free planning roadmap and disaster checklist today at thecrisisplanner.com. Be sure to tune in next week as we explore Bullies Are Not Limited to the Schoolyard with my guest, Marty Ward. This is Linda Fostek, and you've been listening to The Linda Fostek Show. Get off the worry around on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio. Until next week. Maintain your healthy distancing. Be safe out there. Happy planning. No worries. Become the eye of your storm. Thank you and good night. You've been listening to The Linda Fostek Show. Join Linda each week for interesting topics such as in the news, extreme prepping, and home sweet home. Right here on The Linda Fostek Show. been listening to the bbm global network the ideas views and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas views and opinions of the bbm global network company